Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to take a look at the current and in particular the comparison between direct current and alternating current. When you hear the term direct current it usually refers to a battery source which can, which can only push current in a singular direction from the positive end towards the negative end around the circuit and so current always flows in a single direction in that particular path from positive to negative so when we then graph the current as a function of time, you can see it's a steady state current, always the exact same amount of current. The way we can calculate that current is by using Ohm's law that says that the current is equal to the voltage in the circuit divided by the resistance of the circuit. In this particular case, if we have 10 volt battery source and a 2 ohm resistor in the circuit, then the current will be 10 volts divided by 2 ohms, which is 5 amps. And so that will be a steady state or direct current of 5 amps. Now what if the voltage source is an alternating voltage source? It puts out a voltage according to this equation, V max times the sine of omega t. Omega is the frequency of the oscillation of the circuit. And of course when you want to then write it like this, omega is equal to 2 pi f, where f is actually the frequency of the uh, changes in the voltage. Omega is then the radial frequency according to that. Now notice that when you have an alternating voltage source, basically what you're doing is at some moments in time you're pushing electrons in one direction, at other points in time you're pushing electrons in the other direction. Of course, since current is opposite the, the electron flow, it still doesn't matter. You still have current flowing in one direction and then in the other direction as time goes on. And therefore, when you draw current as a function of time, you know, put this type of graph, it looks just like a sine wave. Sometimes the current is zero at that particular moment in time. It reaches a maximum current in one direction, goes back to zero. Now the current changes direction, starts flowing in the opposite direction, reaches a maximum value in the opposite direction. Then again, it begins to slow down, comes back to zero, reverses direction, and then again it builds up to maximum value and so forth. And it continues on like that. We call that alternating current or AC current. The equation will be the current as a function of time will be the maximum current you can reach times the sine of omega t, again omega is 2 pi times the frequency of the oscillation of the voltage source. Now, you see, then you can say perhaps that the average current would be zero because half the time it's flowing in one direction, the other half of the time it's in flowing in the other direction, but that's not really true. Well, in, in a sense, the average current is zero, but the effective current as if is what you get when you take the maximum current and multiply it by the square root of 2 over 2. That's called the root mean square value of the current. And we'll get into that in more detail later. But what that means is that the effective current is that it's 0.707 times I max. In other words, if you want to replace it by a DC equivalent current, it would be 0.707 times I max of the alternating current. So alternating current, even though it's flowing in opposite direction, gives you the impression, at least the components in the circuit, feel as if current is being pushed into one direction only, and the effective, the effective value of the current would be 0.707 times I max. So now at least you have some feel for the difference in current. We'll still have to I'll talk a little bit more about the fact that you still have a positive and a negative side. Current still is pushed to the circuit because there's a, there's a potential difference. And we'll have to square that away with the concept of alternating voltage and alternating current. But at least at this point, just recognize the difference between direct current and alternating current. And that whenever we talk about alternating current, we have to talk about the effective current in the circuit. That's a good start. Let's stay tuned and see what else we have on our next coming videos.